If you had to guess the cell type that's the most abundant in the human body, which would you guess? There are approximately 30 trillion human cells in the human body, not including the contribution from microbes. 25 trillion of these cells come from red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes. So 84% of the total amount of cells in the human body are from red blood cells. Now, red blood cell levels decline during aging. So first, starting in, uh, in youth, uh, red blood cell levels are of about 4.8 million red blood cells per microliter are found in men, whereas uh, 4.3 uh, million red blood cells per microliter are found in women. That's, uh, those are values for someone that's approximately 20 years old. Now, superficially, these numbers don't seem to match uh, the data on the right, but let's do a quick math calculation to show that these are the same as what we see on the left. So rounding the 4.8 uh, value for men up to 5, there are 5 million, red blood cells per micro, uh, 5 million red blood cells per microliter. There are 1 million microliters per liter. And then there's approximately 5 liters of total uh, blood volume in the average 70 kilogram men. So when we multiply these data together, we get a value of 25 trillion red, uh, red blood cells. So uh, a, a similar calculation for women can be obtained using the 4.3 value that's found in youth with about four liters of blood volume that's found in women. And when you multiply those data together, you get about 17 trillion red blood cells out of a total human uh, a cell count of 21 trillion in women. So 84% for both men and women uh, are red blood cells of all, the, all their cells. Now, as shown on the graph, red blood cell levels decline during aging. Two values that are somewhere around 3.9 million red blood cells per microliter. And as I'm gonna show in this video, the age-related decrease for red blood cells can be reversed through diet. So let's have a look at the data. So uh, that's what we see here. And uh, we're looking at red blood cells on the left. Plot, uh, and then we're going to uh, show on the right how it, how it uh, uh, blends into the age-related changes uh, graph. So uh, I've, got, I've been tracking my own circulating biochemistry for uh, at least 15 years. I don't have data for all of the variables for 15 years. Uh, for some, I have data starting uh, a little later. So for red blood cells, the earliest data that I have starts in 2008. Now, back then, I was only tracking my uh, biomarkers about once a year every time I would go to the doctor. And what we can see over six measurements over a five-year period was that my average red blood cell count was 4.96. And uh, so that would put me uh, already off the chart uh, relative to someone on, you know that, that was my chronological age. So Relatively higher red blood cell uh, counts are good because they carry oxygen. Your cells have oxygen to do, uh, to do metabolic work, to produce energy, etc. Now, uh, I started getting more serious about tracking, tracking more often uh, through blood tests, and then weighing all my food, rec recording it into an Excel file, um, uh, recording you know, the data that I would get uh, after logging in online to get the macros and micros. Uh, so I started getting more serious about that in 2015. So over 16 measurements from uh, April, about April 2015 to June of 2019, uh, my average red blood cell count was significantly lower based on a t-test uh, at 4.62. And when we put that data on the graph, we can see that now I'm on the age-related curve, almost identical for my age, chronological age at that time. Um, so then uh, I was able to reverse this. So looking at uh, my blood, blood test data for red blood cells starting in uh, September 2019 to December of 2020, over eight measurements, my average red blood cell count went up to 5.08. So now I'm relative, both relative to my age and, uh, you know, my earlier data, you know, from 2008, now I'm off the charts. Uh, so it, it, from my perspective, higher red blood cell counts are good because as I mentioned, with less red blood cells circulating, you'll uh, have less hemoglobin, uh, less ability to carry oxygen, and then your cells will have to rely on uh, glycolysis, which is less efficient than uh, oxidative metabolism to generate ATP. So how was I able to do this? How was I able to reverse this age, this, you know, the age-related trend for uh, declining red blood, cell, red, red blood cell count? So uh, the primary reason I think that I was able to do that is because I, I included yogurt into my diet. Now, why, why do I think uh, that's the major explaining factor? So here we're looking at my red blood cell count versus my average yogurt in intake from 2015 to 2020. Now first, when you notice the data on the left, this is when I didn't eat any yogurt at all. So the, you know, there's, there's basically uh, three and a half years of data where there was no yogurt at all in my diet. And based on that, we can see that the highest I was able to get my red blood cells up to was 4.8, with values as low as somewhere around 4.45. Now once I started including yogurt into my diet, whether it was about 250 grams a day or more, 
uh, about 450 grams a day, I've never been lower than 4.9. And we can see that the correlation between my red blood cells with my average daily yogurt intake is strong. So with a correlation coefficient of 0.91, a correlation coefficient of 1 is perfect. So 0.91 is very strong. Uh, the uh, R squared, so 82% of the variability in red blood cells can be explained by my yogurt intake. And the p-value for the correlation between my red blood cells with the yogurt is statistically significant, significant as you can see, by the p-value. Now, uh, notice that milk equals uh, whey plus cheese. So if you add vinegar or an acid to milk, uh, if you add enough acid, the milk will separate into the uh, whey fraction and the cheese fraction. So can uh, looking at uh, other dairy products uh, offer more insight about how or why uh, dairy or yogurt in this case may, see, may, may be affecting my red blood cell levels? So interestingly, uh, when looking at my whey protein intake versus uh, my red blood cell counts, we can see that the higher my whey protein, whey protein intake, the lower my red blood cell levels. And this is a, a significant correlation with a correlation coefficient of 0.61. 38% of the variability in red blood cells explained by whey. Uh, and then it's, it's a statistically significant uh, correlation as shown by the p-value. So this data goes in opposition to the yogurt intake. If the whey fraction of yogurt or milk was driving the association with red blood cells, we'd expect to see the correlation between whey with red blood cells going up. So Clearly, the whey fraction of milk may not be the uh, driving effect for the red blood cell levels going up. Well, what about cheese? Uh, so here we can see cheese plotted against my average daily cheese intake plotted against my red blood cell levels uh, uh, over the past two and a half years. Uh, and similarly, the whey data is for the last uh, two and a half years. Uh, um, so uh, uh, the cheese association with red blood cells, it's not statistically significant. So even though the trend line looks up, the p-value is not even nowhere close to statistical significance. Now. Notice that although milk equals whey plus cheese, yogurt is fermented milk. Now, uh, I measured my microbiome composition uh, three times from 2017 to February 2019, and this is before I started including yogurt in my diet in, I think, September, around September of 2019. So I have microbiome measurements that are in the complete absence of yogurt. And for those three measurements, there was literally no lactobacillus, which is well known to be found in yogurt, uh, you know, yogurt products. Uh, there was, so there was no lactobacillus in my gut. So um, I think it's possible that lactobacillus may be driving uh, erythropoiesis, which is your body's uh, ability to make new, uh, uh, new, red, new red blood cells. Now, there's no published data for that uh, uh, link between lactobacillus with uh, making new re red blood cells. So if anyone has data like that, leave a comment, leave the paper. Um, let's try to figure out why yogurt may be driving a higher level of red blood cells uh, in my data. Now, alternatively, some may say that the increase in red blood cells is just due to dehydration because if you have the same amount of red, red blood cells, blood test to blood test, but, but the latter blood test has less water in it, it'll look like it's a higher red blood cell value even though the same amount of red blood cells would be in both uh, measures. So can, how can dehydration, so can we address, is this a dehydration related story? Uh, so first, how can dehydration be calculated from a blood test? So uh, the most common measurement is to measure the plasma osmolarity, and then this is by calculating two times the sodium concentration uh, plus glucose divided by 18 plus blood urea nitrogen bun divided by 2.8, and that all, all those data would then be in millimoles per liter. So a higher plas plasma osmolarity would be indicative of being more dehydrated. So in other words, again, if you have uh, the same amount of solute but less water in one situation, you'll have a higher osmolarity and that will be indicative of being more dehydrated. So on the left, we see my data for plasma osmolarity using my blood test results for sodium, glucose, and blood urea nitrogen. And on the right, we see my red blood cell counts that I just introduced in the slides before. So if the increase in red blood cells is related to dehydration, we'd expect to see a higher osmolarity. So when looking at the data on the left for plasma osmol osmolarity, we can see that going from the 2015 to the 20, uh, September 2019 measurements, my uh, average osmolarity went from about 291 to two, 289. Now, this, uh, when looking at those two groups of data with a t-test, uh, the p-value is 0 0.06 with a trend for a lower osmolarity. So that would suggest that I'm uh, more hydrated in the yogurt-containing uh, 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 red blood cell-related uh, measurements, not less hydrating. So uh, yeah, so that's all I've got.
Uh, you can find me lots of places online. And uh, if you made it to the end, thanks a lot and have a great day.